Hello everybody, hope you're doing marvellously well. In this episode, we're going to do drum EQ basics. So before we get started, you can download these multi-tracks. So don't forget to hit the link and you can follow along and you can EQ the drums the way you want to hear them as well. So make sure you do that. You can hit the link below to go and do it. Please as ever hit the like button, um, subscribe if you haven't already, and you can go to producelikeapro.com and sign up for the email list and get a whole bunch of free goodies. EQ on drums is one of the most powerful things you can do to make a drum kit jump out of the mix. So what we have here is a very simple drum recording. There's two kick drum mics, two snare drum mics, a hi-hat, rack, floor tom mic, and overheads, and a stereo room. I'm gonna show you how to get really quick, simple, basic results from any kind of drum recording. The top mic here is a D112. This is the inside of a kick drum. Underneath is an outside kick mic. And those two together give us this sound. Those two elements up give us both bits of the kick drum. If you listen to the first one once again, it's inside the kick drum a little clicky. If you listen to the outside one here, being on the outside of the kick drum, it's got a little bit more boom because it's hearing the whole sound of the kick. Now, you may have a combination of both those mics or you might only have one. So let's sort of think about it in those terms. I'm gonna start off with the inside kick mic and I'm gonna grab a basic EQ. So here is a stock EQ plugin that we're gonna put on the kick drum. Now, Many of you know this principle of finding like ugly areas and getting rid of them. So how is that done? Well, you can make your cue narrow here and then you can boost. So this is quite an old trick and it's worth it if you've never done it before to at least try it. See, in that 350 area, it's pretty ugly. It's not the ugliest moment, but pretty ugly. I'm actually gonna widen the cue. Horrible. Now that wide cue there, I'm not gonna do the opposite. I'm actually gonna cut that. Bypass. Back in. If anything, it gets rid of some of that sort of unwanted excessive bleed that you hear, but it also gets rid of that oh, kind of ugly mid-range. I'm gonna cut it more and I'm gonna widen it more. It's also with that cut exaggerating the clickiness above and the low thump below. So it's a nice little tool. Now, even on a kick drum, high passing is not a bad thing. So if I go and hit in here, you'll see a little bit of high passing came in. And here I can adjust the slope. So it's a little bit more aggressive. So I've taken 20 hertz, which was the stock place it's gone, and just high passed it out of the way. In a kick drum, is nice to sort of focus because what I really want is say around about 60 hertz. Go to 60 hertz here and boost it. We can narrow the cue a little bit. Bypass. Back in. That thump is really nice. That's pretty aggressive, but I like it. So. It's a strange looking EQ, but remember this microphone has a bit of clickiness because it's inside the kick drum. So it's picking up some of that little snappiness of the beta hitting the head. 
Okay, so if we go to the kick out now and have a listen. It's got a lovely low end, but no click on it whatsoever. So let's grab an EQ. I think the first thing we can do is do a little bit of uh, high passing there. I don't know if we need to boost any 60 at the moment because there's some really great low end, but let's go to that similar area around about 350-ish and cut. There's not much click to gain. So even if we want to go in here and grab say maybe 3K and above, It's adding a tiny bit of click, but look at the huge amount of boost I've done there. And all I'm doing is bringing in all that cymbal bleed. So ideally, we put the two elements together and we get. It's really focused now, but the bottom mic there is giving it a lot of support. So without that bottom mic, what we'll probably have to do if we only use the top one is boost even more low end. Here is the snare top. So you can hear a little bit of bottom snare in it, but not a lot. And if we're going to do it just on its own, what we could do, if you only had a snare top mic, we could bring out some of that bottom snare. So let's go to about 7K on here. It's definitely bringing out like the super highs of the snare. So I'm going to wind it back a little bit. We'll go to about 5K. Gently make that slope not quite so aggressive. Yeah, a bit of cymbal bleed in there, but I can deal with that. Just try something else. Let's do a little high passing. You see that it's far too aggressive. Putting it back to about 120, but it still feels a little bit aggressive. So I'm actually going to boost at the same frequency I cut. So we'll go to about 100, where it actually is defaulting to, and boost. I like the body on the snare. So let's Bypass that and give it a listen. Now with the EQ on. Now let's throw in those two kick elements and have a listen. Cool. Let's so hear the snare bottom on its own. Kind of mid-rangey. I think it might be nice to get some body out of that. See what low end we can get out of this. Not a lot. So we're going to come up a little bit more. We're going to come up to about 200-ish. There you go. Now you're starting to hear some low end. One of those classic EQ points of a Neve 1073 was 220. And that's a nice place to just boost a little bit. So we're around about 220 here. In fact, we can go to 220, exactly. You can hear it just starting to come into play there. I'm actually gonna boost it a little bit more aggressively. I can hear a little bit of kick in there, some of the low lows, so I'm gonna high pass to about 100. And let's bring this down to about 5k like we did with the snare top and boost. 
gently. It's similar to where the snare top is. Let's hear it without an EQ. It's brighter, it's a little bit more up front. Um, there's a little bit more body in it, and it's got rid of some of that mid-range, which, which is nice actually on the snare bottom, but we don't need to boost it anymore there. So I'm now going to add in the two kick elements with the snare top. Add it. Great. Let's go to the hi-hat. Now you can see the fundamental in that hi-hat is all in the mid-range. So if we grab an EQ, we can high-pass it quite dramatically. I'm up to about 450, 460 and it still sounds fine. So yeah, we're about 400 and we've high passed up to there and it's sounding great. Um, actually gonna turn the output up a little bit. Let's hear it with the other elements. One of the nice things is cutting low mids like we've done with the kick drum and obviously the low mid is removed from the hi-hat and boosting top and bottom on the snare drum mics means that that low mid is significantly less in the drums and it's going to give us a lot more clarity when we add other instruments. Now I'm going to have a listen to the toms. Pretty thumpy, kind of ugly sounding toms. Ooh, ooh. I think 100 hertz would be a nice kind of area. Let's have a listen. Okay, so about 140, it starts to come alive. You really hear the low end. But there's low lows that we don't need, so we're gonna high pass right up towards that. But it's ugly in those low mids, so I'm gonna select 350 here. That's really helping that low end breathe. So let's go to maybe three to 5K and start boosting. There you go. So it's quite drastic EQ, but I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to do that. Now we'll go to the floor tom. Do something similar. So I'm boosting about 85. And you can think I'm crazy, but I'm also cutting about the same area. Now I'm gonna go to 350. Cut. Go to about three to five K. Huge difference, huge, huge difference. So let's listen to all the drum elements together. Great. Okay, overheads. Let's have a listen to those overheads. I 
I think there's some low end there we just don't need. Let's get rid of some of the low mids. If we listen to where the toms. Great. If you want to open up the high highs a little bit, we could go to about 7K and boost. Let's go to the room mics and have a listen. Tons and tons of low mids and floppy low end in there that we don't need. No EQ. So much more focus, so much more clarity. Now obviously we can bring in compression, we can bring in reverbs and all kinds of fun things, but the, the difference in clarity is so much greater. I'm going to exaggerate the body even more on the snare. I like that low end. So we'll get a little bit more on it. I'm even going to exaggerate a little bit of extra 60 hertz on that really boomy outside kick mic. Yeah. One of the biggest things you're going to hear that is when you high pass a lot of those elements that don't have the low end in the actual mic itself, you get rid of this humming sound of all the bottom heads going. It's really, really noticeable. Have a listen to this section here. So as I said at the beginning, EQ can do some of the most powerful things. Already the focus on the drum kit is so much better now with, with a great judicious use of high passing, for instance, or low mid cut and boosting low end on the fundamental of the kick, the fundamental of the snare and the fundamental of the toms has allowed it to be so much clearer and cleaner and lets the bloom of all of those instruments cut through. Let's have a listen to limited elements. So if you just had a kick in, a snare top, hi-hat, toms and overheads. This is just six elements. Let's have a listen now. Some of you may not have a hi-hat mic, so let's go with kick, snare, toms and overheads. How about this? No tom mic, so now you're going to rely on the overheads to do this. So what would I do now? Well, I would 
do less high passing. So let's bring down our high passing now. So there's a little bit more of an element of where the toms would be. But I'm going to keep the low mid cut. Let's have a listen. I've had to do this many times, just use overheads for toms. Let's go to that section on the floor tom. So if you're stuck and you've got only a pair of overheads, a kick and a snare, just four mics on the drum kit, you can do it. You just have to think about how the EQ would work in that situation. As you can see here, I'm boosting the low lows, but not too low that it interferes with the kick drum being brought out in the overheads, but enough around about 100 to just get the body on the toms. So that's literally just kick, snare, and overheads. And you can get a drum sound with that with just the four mics. So I hope that helped with the drum EQ basics. Quite often we do EQs with compression and with reverbs and delays and all kinds of fun things. But I've been asked by many of you just to keep it really, really simple. So this is drum EQ basics. Thanks ever so much. Please leave any comments and questions below. If you have any tips or tricks yourself, please let us know. I'd love to hear more about it down below. And have a marvelous time recording and mixing. Don't forget, you can download these multi-tracks as well as the tip sheet and do all of this yourself and mess around with these multi-tracks. Mm -hmm.